Hello and welcome back to week five of this study in Isaiah chapter 55. Last week we saw one reason why we should turn to the Lord. Isaiah told us that the Lord is entirely different from us. He's holy, we're not, so we should turn to the Lord and trust in Him. This week we're going to get reason number two in verses 10 and 11, and it tells us that His Word never fails. Go ahead and grab your Bibles, open up to Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 11, and we'll begin. Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Let's pray. God, we praise you for your unfailing word. We praise you that when you promise peace and life and joy to all who trust in you, that we can believe it because your word never fails. It always succeeds in what you've purposed. And so we pray now, would you give us wisdom as we study your word and, and, and give us understanding of what you've written. God, we pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. So here in verses 10 and 11, we get another illustration from nature. Last week, we had the illustration of, of heaven and earth that showed us the distance and the difference between us and God. This week, we get an illustration of how rain and snow work. We got rain and snow coming down from heaven. And we're going to we're gonna see three similarities here between rain and snow and the word of God. That's the comparison that we're seeing here. Rain and snow in the Word of God. We're going to see that they share a similar origin, a similar purpose, and a similar effectiveness. So where they come from, what they're up to, and then how good they are at their job, the origin, the purpose, and the effectiveness. So he starts off here in verse 10, again with this word, for. And again, that means that he is telling us that he's continuing his reasoning. We've seen in the previous verses of this chapter that, that God is calling us, he's inviting us to repent, to come to him, turn to him, turn away from our sinful ways and trust in him in order that our soul might be satisfied in him. And he's telling us here why we ought to do that. And he says, we ought to turn to the Lord because his word is like rain. His word is, is like snow. Well, how is that? First, we see they, they share a common origin, a common source. Rain and snow come down from heaven. They come down from heaven. You and I can't create rain. We can't, we can't create snow. We simply look up and we receive it when it comes. They come down from heaven. And you remember again from, from our time last week, the infinite distance between heaven and heaven and earth, the infinite distance between heaven and earth. There's this gap. Well, here we see something spanning that gap. Rain and snow come down from heaven, down to earth, spanning the gap. They make the journey. We can't go up to heaven and grab some rain or snow when we need it, but out of heaven, it comes down to us. And likewise, okay, in the same way, so shall my word be. This is the comparison here. God's word comes down to us from heaven. It says it goes out from my mouth. Okay, so these are, these are the comparison points here from heaven and from my mouth. And you remember, again, this infinite distance between God and man. That was the comparison that we saw last week. We see the word spanning the gap. 
The Holy Word of God comes straight from the source down to earth, down to us. The Word of God spans that infinite distance between heaven and earth, and it bridges that gap between between holy God and sinful man. So God is is graciously pouring out His life-giving Word to us. We can't manufacture it. We simply look to Him and we receive it. So that's the origin. The second, we see a similar purpose. He says, uh, rain and snow... They come to water the earth. They, they don't return back to heaven. They go out and they water the earth. So the purpose of rain here is to give life. It's to nourish, to sustain, to feed, to supply. And you remember back to the very first verses of this chapter, the invitation for the thirsty to come and drink, for the hungry to come and eat, for the the poor to come and buy without price. He told us up in verse 3, to hear the word of the Lord that our soul might live. So here we see these satisfying waters pouring down from heaven to give life wherever it falls. And again, this is the case with the word of God. It says, it shall not return to me empty. And you can carry over, over this line of thought. This, that's the purpose of this comparison here. God's word, in a sense, waters the earth. God's word is purposeful. It, it has an aim. It's sent to nourish. And it's sent to give life wherever it falls. You and I sometimes speak carelessly. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been told that I ought to think before I speak. Well, God doesn't speak that way. Proverbs 35, Proverbs 30, verse 5, it says, Every word of God proves true. So He doesn't speak aimlessly. He speaks with purpose. And His purpose in sending out this word is that all who hear it, just like the ground soaks up the water, will live. Now, we don't always function like this is true, but the fact is you and I need the Word of God to live. Without it, we are are dead. And I'm going to chase a rabbit trail real quick here. Uh, The Word has to be central to your life as a believer. The Word should be central to your life as a believer. It should be central to our conversations with one another. It should be central to how we raise our children. It should be central to how we treat one another, how we interact with one another in our friendships, in our marriages, in our workplace, in our churches. And if you're a Christian, you're listening to this, and you're at a church that has maybe a great children's program, has everything you could want for your teens, they play music that you like, the coffee is great, so on and so forth, but you go and you don't hear the word preached, get out of there. Run. Take take as many as you can with you. Just get out. Uh, I'm not kidding. The word has to be central. You will will shrivel up without it. And if you're a member of Lakeside, I'm sure you've probably heard me say this before. If I go off the rails, uh, heaven forbid, and, and I start preaching some nonsense, and I no longer feed you the word of God, I have failed in my primary duty as one of your pastors, and it is your responsibility as the church to call me on it. And if I don't repent by God's grace, it's your responsibility to fire me and get you someone who will give you the word. The word is what gives you life. It sustains us in a lost and dying word, world. Excuse me. All right. So we have the common origin, we we got the common purpose. The last similarity here, they share a similar effectiveness. A similar effectiveness. And this is the best part here. God's word is 100% effective 100% of the time. When the rain and the snow come down from heaven, they don't return, but they water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Again, without the life-giving waters, the flowers, the plants, the trees, they are powerless to grow on their own. Without water, they shrivel up, they, they die. The rain and the snow, they have to come down from heaven and make it sprout. But that's the effect of rain. 
isn't it? It, it? it accomplishes what it's sent out to do. It accomplishes its goal. Without it, no life. With it, there's life. And the rain and the snow, they also give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. This is a, a picture of total, complete provision of need. And what I love about this is that it traces the end product. It traces uh, bread as the end product back to the original source, right? The rain, the water. And think about that with me here. We often, we're, we're prone to forget that everything we have comes from the Lord. That, that prayer of, of give us this day our daily bread. If we're honest, that's kind of hard for us. Most of us have not gone a day where we've wondered where our daily bread will come from. We take that daily food for granted. But there's this whole chain of events here. Stick with me. Right, that, that bread at your table that probably came from a supermarket, you bought it with money that you earned working your job, but unless you're real thrifty yeah, and you make your own bread, somebody else made that bread for you. And to make that bread, they had to have the right ingredients. They had to have some grain to make flour and, and whatever else you, you need to make bread. They had to put them together. And, and to get those grains in the first place, somebody had to plant some seeds in the ground. And for that grain to grow at all, what has to happen? It has to have some water come down from heaven and give it life. And all of this from beginning to end is of the Lord. And so that, that, that's why we thank him for our food. And so he skips through all those steps and he says, hey, that water gave you your bread. The water, the, the rain and the snow here, they accomplish their purpose. They don't come back empty. They water the earth and they give Life, their job is done effectively. And so it is with the word of God. Just like the rain and the snow. It says, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of God is effective. When God speaks, he, he wastes no words. His words always produce the intended result. So we might be tempted to forget this. And in doing so, we might be tempted to take maybe too much credit for our own salvation. We might think, well, I'm a Christian because I, I decided to go to church. I heard a sermon. I gave my life to Jesus. Well, praise God for that. But that didn't come from you. Just like the bread on your table traces its source from beginning to end all the way back to the Lord, so your life in Christ is from Him from beginning to end. He sends His Word into your heart. He calls you to repent. He, he creates repentance in you and He brings you from life to death. His Word never fails to accomplish His purpose. God's word is, is powerful. When he speaks, it always accomplishes his purpose. And you know, this is another difference between us and God, isn't it? Right? God, God speaks and it happens. His very act of speaking brings about the intentions of his words. So when he says something like, let there be light, what happens? Well, there's light. Our words are powerful. James tells us that, but, but they're not that powerful. If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. God doesn't have to repeat himself to accomplish his purpose. He speaks and it's, it's done. God's words accomplish God's purpose 100% of the time. And so this call to repent, let's, let's zoom out again to the context of this chapter. The call to repent that we see here in Isaiah chapter 55, this call to turn from our ways, to turn to his ways, that's both an invitation to come and it's at the same time the effective means that God uses to change us and to draw us to himself. Now, let me put that another way. This call to repent, it isn't just wishful thinking for God. This is a, an invitation that, that's going to have a 100% success rate in the hearts of those that he calls to himself. His words come to me. Turn to me. Trust in me. They create repentance in the hearts of his people. His word 
is effective. So Christian, as we wrap this up, the application here is that we must be people of the book. If God's word is, is trustworthy, if it's effective, if it's, if it's straight from the mouth of God, we must be people of the book. I think of Peter in, in John chapter 6, many of his disciples, the disciples of Christ, turned away from Jesus. Jesus asks them if, uh, if they want to run away too. Well, he says to Jesus, where else can we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. But if, if we're honest, I think that you and I are, are prone to go just about everywhere else to try to find the life that only He can provide. He alone has the words that give life to those who hear. And so we have in His Word, we have in our Bibles, an endless stream of soul-satisfying, life-giving water. So our lives have to revolve around His life-giving Word. And friend, this is why we preach the gospel. The tool that we've been given to make disciples of all nations is not a bunch of money or the latest, greatest technology or, or trendier churches. It's the word of the gospel. It's the good news of, of Christ's life, his death, his resurrection, that all who hear the word and believe will live. And, and from our earthly perspective, you and I, we have no clue who it is that will turn and trust in the Lord. Our role is to simply faithfully and broadly preach the gospel to all people. And, and we trust God and his sovereignty and wisdom to bring about his purposes in the sending out of his word. Guys, these, these verses give me so much confidence in the word of God. As Christians, we are a people of the book. We feast on the word of God. Because we know that His Word will accomplish His purposes. It's not a maybe. As, as we listen and meditate and reflect and proclaim, His Word will accomplish His purposes in us, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, and in the world. Thank you for watching. Guys, we have one week left. Uh, so I hope you'll come back next week as we close this study out in verses 12 and 13. I'm looking forward to it. I hope to see you then. Thank you.